the 34th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the last Sunday for this cycle in Ordinary Time, and it's always the Feast of Christ the King. And it's a, it's a difficult feast for us who do not like royalty or kings or being dominated. So we have to come up with a, a way of understanding the kingship of Jesus. There is in this country such a fear of being told what we have to do. It starts very much in family life. Children don't like to be told that they have to go to bed, brush their teeth, eat their spinach. And that continues. Don't tell me what I have to do. I have my freedom. Don't tell me what I can't say. Don't tell me I have to wear seat belts. Don't tell me I should get uh, vaccines. I will decide that. And what's interesting, that those who speak of the necess necessity of, say, political freedom, then run to find out what they are to believe and what they are to say. They read or listen to or watch. Tell me what I should do in order to be free, which is a contradiction. So uh, I, will, I will not do this, I will not do that because higher power, legislature, presidents, Congress is telling me, <clears throat> and, and they, they love freedom and yet they get dependent on what they hear or read or watch or converse. Now I know what I should do because somebody else told me, not the government of course, not the authorities, not the church, not my parents, it goes back to pretty early in life. And then we have the kingship of Jesus. It's at the end of the liturgical year, and, and with next Sunday we will begin a whole new liturgical year, and we begin with Advent and the birth of Jesus and the life of Jesus. And it is assumed at the end of this liturgical year, this liturgical semester that we have learned or been taught or interiorized something of the person of Jesus. And so in today's gospel, he says, if you're my follower, if you are of my clan, my tribe, my flock, as difficult as it might be, but you do want to, and you do, out of your freedom, want to live the, what, what really are not commands as much as invitations. You know, when, when Adam and Eve left the garden in the story in Genesis, they did not know what it was that they are to do. Who are they? And what is their freedom? And, and so the, the, the whole history of the people of Adam and Eve, the people of Adam, Isaac and Jacob, the necessity for a leader. Help me know who I am. Help me know what there is to do. And so then God through Moses tells the people, this is what you have to do in order for Jesus, God, the holy transcendent God, what that God 
demands of you in order for you to know who you are and to act accordingly. Jesus is different. Instead of commands, it's invitations. And this is what you will want to do if you are free enough from being dominated by your selfishness which can rule us, can be our king from th three years old on. Don't tell me what I have to do. But to, to be invited by Jesus, saying, I want I, this whole gospel in Matthew's gospel, I've tried to tell you who you are. And if you know who you are, this is what you will want to do. Blessed are you, he says at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are you if you are poor of spirit, hunger and thirst for what is right. And then in today's gospel, near the end, in Matthew 25, we have a, a, a summary, not anything new, really. And his kingship is not dominated, but encouraged. So it makes it very specific, not just blessed are you if you are poor in spirit, pure of heart, merciful. He's saying, could you find people in your life who are thirsty, hungry, alienated, strangers, sick, imprisoned, unclothed, are they around you at all? Are they there? Oh, they're there. They might have fine clothing, but Jesus says there's a nakedness inside them that needs to be healed. There's a sickness that needs to be cured. There's a thirst. There's a sense of alienation in everyone. So he says, you, you will want to do this because it's what I did and I would do. And I ask you to do it because it's in you to do. To comfort those who are thirsty for life, to be guided, children, family, neighbors, there's a thirst for belonging, that everyone is a stranger. Especially in this post-COVID time, there is a, a, a sense I don't belong. And so to walk alongside people, to greet them, to, to listen to them, to t some way to tell them they're not alone. Then Jesus says, as often as you did it to the thirsty and hungry and displaced, the wanderers, those who are imprisoned by their own negativity, that they don't belong, that there's nothing to them. And they can begin not imprisoned behind bars of steel, but, but, but behind bars of memory and doubt. What the gospel is about is doing something, but not just literally. Yes, you can give money. You can even go to um, a kitchen or a, visit somebody in the hospital or the prison or write people in the prisons. Yes, but there are, there are deeper ones, deeper thirsts and deeper hungers and deeper senses of not belonging. And, and we have the power, the, the strength, the interior to transcend. Well, if, if I visit the stranger, the prison, what is the cost to me? We had a young man in class <clears throat> years ago, right in the middle of it, he said, and this is in the class, in Ignatian Spirituality, I can't believe how selfish I am. 
What a great discovery. What are you going to do with your unselfishness? <clears throat> well, that's the interior. Maybe what Jesus is saying is, experience your own interior, your own hunger and thirst, your own sense of being a stranger. Pray with that and get in touch with that. Let that be comforted. And the more there is that comfort and gratitude for who you are, you will want to be with those who are estranged, who don't belong. And I think that's everyone. Everyone needs to be accompanied, to be listened to, to be brought out of prison, to given food of friendship and spirit. And so, we might be inclined to say, I don't want to do what anybody else says. Demands, Jesus is not demanding. It's inviting. And not, not inviting to something new, it's, it's, it's something old called grace, something within us that says, this is who I am and this is what I do. I will want to listen to you, accompany you, call you, heal you from something interior. Everyone has an interior and everyone suffers from not knowing deeply enough their interior. So that's, that's what Jesus did. Jesus was talking to the interior of people, letting them go of laws and have-tos what do you want to do if you are, if you really believe in your holiness, the holiness he shares with you, his kingship, as it says in the first reading, I will gather them, I will comfort them, I will do that. That's to us. He's saying, I will, I will, I am comforting you if you let me in. Well, that's the liturgical year we're ending. And the liturgical year next week we will begin to let him keep coming more deeply into our interiors so we will want to do rather than have to do. We will be not dominated by have to's, but encouraged to do. Our deepest desire is to love and not be afraid to love. So we live a celebration of his kingship which is interior, not demanding, but inviting. And maybe we can reflect, what's in me that wants to do, wants to be? What is crying in a way, hungering to come out as part of his kingship to be with his flock? his people. Happy feast day.